Okay, pause. If your stomach just turned watching that, even though you're on the couch like me, there's a scientific reason for that. It's called vicarious experience, and it's basically when you feel somebody else's happiness, pain, or anxiety. Let's zoom into the science and figure out why this phenomenon is so critical for our evolution as humans and as society. When you experience something frightening or scary, like jumping out of a plane, watching a family member scream in terror, whether it's a prank or not, our fingers may start to sweat, our heart may begin to race. This is our body's fight or flight. That's Bianca Jones Marlin, a neuroscientist at Columbia University. She says the fight or flight response is our brain's way of keeping us safe. Biology wants us to survive, our brain wants us to survive. So it turns out, just watching a scary situation will signal to your brain to elicit a fear response. That's because your brain sends an alert that the situation could cause serious hurt or worse, and we learn to adapt accordingly. If we see someone leaning over and they go too far, and it doesn't end well, we have now learned from that situation without having to do it ourselves. Our brain is constantly taking in information for our survival. This reaction lowers our chance of death and ups our chances for success. It's a win-win. In all kinds of brains, mice, primates, seals, humans, have the ability to learn from observing. But how does the brain learn from the experiences of others and which of its many parts are involved? To get answers, I called AZA Alsop, a psychiatrist and neuroscientist at Yale who specializes in social learning. The hippocampus is really important um, for social memory. And social memory, which is critical for social learning, kicks in when we're little, when we're watching our parents or other people around us. Here's a brain, and this seahorse-shaped hippocampus is connected to two other brain areas that are critical for vicarious or social learning. There's the amygdala, which you probably know as the brain's fear center. And then there's the anterior cingulate cortex, or ACC, our new brain friend that's important for decision-making and social interactions. The ACC and the amygdala are intricately connected, and those connections are important for encoding social aspects of learning. In ACA's mouse experiments, for example, it was learning that a light turning on signaled an impending electric shock. Whether the mice experienced the shock directly or whether they were just watching, both groups ended up learning that the light was bad news. When AZA looked closer at what was going on, he found that neurons in the ACC, whose activity is important for social learning, changed their firing patterns. And that signaled to the amygdala that something bad was coming. And the amygdala learns that and then knows this is something that should have you know, a negative fear output. And other research groups have found similar results in humans. When you're watching people attempt death-defying feats, you're not going into a death spiral emotionally. But your brain is taking note telling you, you're safe for now, but if you try that, you might not be. So why is social learning important? The brain craves social interaction from the time we're little, and those early social interactions hone our social skills. This teaches us to learn from others' experiences, which can help us avoid potentially dangerous situations. But it's not just about avoidance. Congratulations! Social learning also helps establish community through empathy. Think of when your little sister finally makes the shot. <laughs> or when the ending of the Titanic movie comes on and you feel like you're living the loss all over again. Commiserating with others, even in bad times, helps us feel better. Except our ability to relate to other people may not be the same across the board. That's because the brain is constantly making predictions about what comes next. And those predictions are based on past experience which brings us back to some interesting findings from AZA's work in mice. He found that experiencing the shock directly, well... That's actually not necessary for them to learn, but they just learn much better when they experience it, which sort of makes sense even intuitively from human experience. You can kind of more relate when you experience the thing that the person is talking about. It's the brain's equivalent of walking in somebody else's shoes. The more conscious we become about how our brains are conditioned, how that drives our behavior, and actually understand how the various inputs that we get during development shape that, I think we can actually then begin to consciously evolve the brain in, in a pro-empathic way, which I actually think is critical for our survival as a species. AZA said that finding common ground that cuts past our tribal tensions is really critical. We also have other tools at our disposal, like therapy, music, and psychedelics. 
The last two have been used by Indigenous communities for centuries to promote social bonding and empathy. So next time you watch a horror movie or listen to a sad song and you start screaming or crying, don't be embarrassed. Know it's your brain behaving the way it's supposed to, based on thousands of years of evolution. If you want to know more about brains, leave me your questions below and don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching y gracias.